with weeds and poison ivy and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So, okay. Where do you set it that corner? Do you set it the inside of that corner? You know, is that the best best place to set? Say like the fence corner goes like this. Setting inside of here? No, I never set inside no. of a corner for this very reason. When they smell your lure, right, they may be going down the field just nonchalantly. When they smell your lure, boom. Instant on guard. No. Somebody's been here. Something has been here. I need to investigate it. All right. So if you try to crowd them in an mm -hmm. inside corner, it's not going to work nowhere near as good as an outside corner. Get on that outside corner. That way they have all this free <coughs> area to split if yeah. they feel like they need yep. to split. Okay? The outside corners. Alright, um, you want to always play the wind, okay, so you have hedgerow coming down to here. Okay, it's pretty thick, and, and I mean, you wouldn't see how your beagle could get through, but a fox is hunting that. Which side do you think he's on? Stop and think of this. Which side of that hedgerow do you think he's on? He's going to no, be on the, the, the side, if he's hunting, He's going to be on the side downwind that side. the wind's blowing. Yeah, to. downwind side. So he can smell that rabbit mm -hmm. or that groundhog or whatever that's in there. So where do you set? You set on that side mm -hmm. because that's where he's going to be hunting. Okay, just little little things like that that help you uh, to be successful in, in your trapping. Uh, more questions? What about your trap stakes? Do you ever have to worry about them being set free? I uh, die and I wax the top six or eight inches. Yep. I just stick them down in the wax. You can a little more, so. Uh, I can, when I dye my traps, I've got a big thing that I dye I can dye about three dozen at a time. Um, and I've got one of those turkey cookers, you know what I'm talking about. And a big pan about this big with a lid when I'm waxing. Okay. Um, when I get finished all my traps, waxing them, then I'll take my uh, my stakes, and they're a little bit longer than these. <laughs> but I'll take my stakes and I'll, I'll stick them at least the heads down in so they're at least that far down in the water. Let them die, pull them out, let them. Uh, drip a little bit while I'm doing the rest, and then I'll stick them down in the smoking wax. Okay, let me let me tell you something there. What's the reason for, in my my opinion, what's the reason for dying traps? Well, it it takes and and it cooks away all the old stuff from last year. Yeah. Um, it, it gets the old wax off from yeah. last year and it comes to the top. You want to make sure before you lift your trap out of the die that you got a rolling uh, you got a rolling bubble of, of boiling water so that when you pull it up you don't pull through the old die, uh, the old wax that's floating on the top. Okay. How, what makes the trap, in my opinion, what makes the trap scent free? The wax. The wax. wax. Yeah. Seals it. The wax seals it like yeah. saran wrap or whatever you want to look at. It, it's That's what covers your trap and keeps it, uh, makes it scent free. So, what you want to watch out for is when you take that trap out of the wax, that is when that wax is most vulnerable to absorb human or foreign odors. You want to be, when you wax and dye, you want to do it in an area that's free of gas and oil smells and things and such. You want to, you want to do it so, because when that wax is wet on that trap, that is when it's susceptible to scent. Alright, once it dries, you're good to go. Just store them in a good place. Uh, where it's no stinkies. 
do you wax one track at a time or do you do a bunch of them? And half a dozen. Uh, a bundle of traps in the wax. And you see how they look when they come out. They've been in there about a minute. Now when you bring them up over the fire, you've got to shake them a little bit. Bring them away quick. And what I do is I stick them out my trapping shed door and sling them back and forth a little bit to try to get the uh, excess wax off. And if you look at them here, I'm going to lay them back down here. If you look at them there, you see that they just look wet. They don't look white. My kettle will take six of these sleepy creeks and I can dip them down. And then you clean the wax out of where the, the pen goes in. Well, yeah. I do that there when, when I'm setting a track. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, I have a little knife in it and it only takes one little scrape. I mean, when you do a couple hundred of them, you can get pretty good at it. <laughs> Don't you have to do both pieces though? I mean... I do the end of the dog. Right. The top end of the dog and underneath of the pan. Right. Now, the Sleepy Creeks have the pan system that's sort of like the palsy trip mm -hmm. where you can raise the way up. And now, if you have just a dog notch, then you've got to clean that notch out also. Or you come back next morning and what made my trap go off? Yep. <laughs> pan tension. Here we go again. <laughs> uh, somebody's going to say, Oh my. I can't sell those pan tensioner tools with him doing demos like that. But, uh, pan tension. You should be able to learn to do it by feel. Mm -hmm. All right? I mean, it's just going to take so much time to put that four yeah. pound pressure on every out. trap. Yeah. Okay, what's going to happen two, three days after it's sitting in the ground? Yeah, yeah it's probably going to stiffen up a little yeah. bit. Rust a little bit. Okay. can't prevent that. Now, I could pass this through the whole crowd here and let you see what my pan tension is for coyotes and fox. Uh, but by the time it got here, it'd be so loose again. But if anybody wants to feel it, then... You know, you can after after we get finished here, then I'll let you. I'll show you how I do that and how it feels. All right. What causes toe catches on coyotes, Bob? Most of the time. White tip. It's too tight. Mm -mm. That's right. Too light of a pan tension. Yeah. Uh, it fires. Huh? Yeah, it fires too quick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here, here you go. Okay, so you've got you got a pan tension like that. I mean, that's that's pretty loose. All right, it's working good. I can get it set. I can get it in the ground. Mm -hmm. I get it all covered up. Looks nice. Sprinkles rain. And what does rain do to dirt or weight, peat moss? Weight. Makes it heavier. Yeah, weight. Then come back in the morning, I got a fire trap. And the first thing I think, man, I got a smart box. <laughs> <laughs> here's another thing. That if you want to be the best that you can be, the first thing you've got to do is clear your mind of all the wise tales about trapping. You got to get rid of those guys. I mean, I know there are a lot of good guys, old timers and stuff that meant well, but some of that stuff is this stuff. All right. I had one guy tell me one time he kept coming in and his trap was just flipped over. Flipped over. And you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. And usually it's a coon, but will yeah. fox do that? Yeah, I've yeah. had fox tracks in mm -hmm. and he just dig it. I do. Think how it's will do. Yeah. Well, he said he kept coming in and his trap was upside down. He said, I fixed him. 
He said, I just set my trap upside down and, and the next morning come back and he was in the trap. <laughs> he was serious <laughs> as a heart attack. Now, is that believable? And what we need to do, we need to be able to decipher realism <laughs> with uh, campfire stories. All right? Okay. That's what we've got to do. With, you know, the only one that's going to make a difference in your trapping experience is you. You. Is you. You know, I'm not in competition with you. You're not in competition with me, I hope. I'm in competition with that animal out there. You know, if, if I miss him, yeah, I miss him. If I catch him, he loses. Yep. <laughs> okay. Now. He becomes a pretty guard. Any questions? Anyone have any questions? Do you reuse the steaks? Say you use steaks in a set, you've done pounding them in, and that's probably taking some of the wax off, and then you pull them out. Would you reuse it, or would you re-wax it before you reuse it? Okay, the way that I run my line is the first two weeks of November, before deer season and Thanksgiving, I run a two or three week trap line, all right? With those traps in the ground, if I have traps, when I go to pull them, if I have traps that did not catch anything, I keep them separate from the ones that did catch. And then after Thanksgiving, I reset again in Virginia and West Virginia, and I use those same stakes and those same traps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, I mean, they're, you keep them they're clean. clean those, you yeah. know, they just been in the ground. And yeah. So pounding the stake down in doesn't mm -hmm. knock any of the wax off the top? Was... Well, it probably smashes it a little bit, but then again, the wax, when I get finished waxing uh, things, it just looks wet. You know, if if your traps and your stakes have that white look to them when you pull them out of the wax, you didn't leave them in long enough or you wax yeah. it not enough. Okay? It should just look wet. Hmm. And yeah. that's it. Just, just a wet look. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Or any question? Yeah, there, there's two spring. They're not four coil. I use an offset jaw, uh, and there's a reason that I use an offset jaw. Um, some folks will say the offset jaw is good because it lets more blood flow. I used to think that, but. If you stop and think about it, metal against the foot is metal against the foot. Let your levers come up. The reason I use the offset jaw Let is it lets my lever come up just a little higher. Locks tighter. You see, and it lets them, the levers come up just that much higher, quarter inch maybe or so. And that's that much more holding power. Yep. It's not so much spring tension as it is leverage that holds the animal in the trap. Okay? So, that's my preference there. Is uh, I like an offset for that reason there. Um, I don't use... I don't use a long chain. I guess you can see that. That's what I use right there. Short. Well, there's arguments both ways. You know what I'm saying? Or opinions both ways. Put it that way. I feel like this gives him less lunging power mm -hmm. to pull a stake. I double stake anyway. Uh, less lunging power to damage his shoulder. Thus, you know, the short chain for me is also cheaper to put on the track. <laughs> you don't have all that chain to buy. You know what I mean? I Anyone else? In my bed. I wasn't and paying I just got in my you stake it, down, did you stake it right under the trap? No. Uh, when, which I'm primarily 
Um, when I make he's, my trap he's bed, he's going to loosen it a little bit. Right? If, 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 if you can he's imagine he's making he's your trap bed, bed. He's all right, back mm -hmm. up here on top of the ground, I just notched out a little spot about this much so that my trap stakes and everything would be under the ground on top. just did back here was I cut me out a little spot for uh, my trap stakes. Not down in the hole because if you put it down in the hole and he starts going around and around and around you're gonna have a great big hole in the morning. <laughs> this way if you if you stake your trap up on top and just take enough dirt out so when you're done it's under the surface when he goes around and around, he's just filling that hole in. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you just dig it out a little bit and you got your dirt hole. And your trap bit mm -hmm. there and it's not damp. Unless the coon gets in it. I grab, I grab mine. Yeah. The, the coon gets in it. Yeah. You're just done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Anything at what time is it, mother? That's why I was asking him. Ten fifty four. Ten fifty four. All righty. Any more questions from anyone? Something maybe I get to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sure, you got a question. I know you do. It, you know, we, we need to interact here so we can share. All right. What about dispatching? What are you? It. Well, that's something brought that up. Dispatching is something you, you don't want to share mm -mm. with non trappers or whatever. Because, I mean, that's another common sense issue here uh, about, you know, trapping that we need to, we need to come together, I guess, with the hounds mm -hmm. to, oh, yeah. to become one together yeah. in a sport. Um, that doesn't mean that we have to concede <laughs> to all of their wishes or they have to concede to all of ours. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, um, you know, if you catch a hound in, a, in one of these traps here, he, he's, he's not hurt. Mm -hmm. They just let him loose, or they'll let him loose and leave you a nasty note. Yeah, that does happen. <laughs> Something like that. that does happen. <laughs> Nonetheless, you know, a hound's a hound. He's not going to be on the leash, and he's going to be in areas yeah. that he's not supposed to be. Okay. So, what am I saying? I'm not saying don't set a trap there. I'm not saying that. I'm saying Please. use some common sense and set the smallest thing that you can set that will hold your target animal. And that makes sense to me, you know. So, I'm not very fond for, for saying what I just said, but that's well, like it that makes reality. sense. And it's going to happen. What's going to happen is it's going to be more division. And then the antis are going to take us off yep. one at a time. All right. So we just need to all get together um, and get our egos off of our shoulder. Any more questions on canine trapping here? Do, do you use that set exclusively, the dirt hog? Uh, do you use like a flat set? Like I, like I was saying, speed is a must in what I do. I've got 200 miles to run. And now, if I get if I get an animal that's been educated by me or by another trapper or something, and he's digging, dig, dig, I, then I'll revert to sit post or something like that. You know, back away from the sector, and I will not use. The lure that's in the lure. Right. I'll just use fox urine or something like yeah. that. And I stay from the fox. smell. Yeah. And, you know, I'll set that, and I've had good luck with that. Um, get rid of that digger. So we call it. Any more questions? Your crap bed. You have to get it all better than your crap done. 
great. You like that to be flat, or you want your trap pan to be a low I, spot? I like to step down. I, step down. Yeah, and we all know the the scenario here. It's just like you going down a set of steps. You know, when when you go to set step down on that next step down, this leg's done committed to the weight of this one, and and that's what's going to happen. You're going to get a higher catch on his foot. Mm -hmm. um, all the time, if you will, you know, because he's stepping on that and committing to it, and he doesn't have that much chance to pull pull back, uh, unless he's a bobcat or something like that, but you still catch him that way too. Yeah. I leave it a little lower. Uh, what I do is, I don't measure, but after done, having done so many of them over time, um, you, know, you just get a feel. For it. I go about three inches down to the hard, and then I'll put uh, a little bit of dirt in there to bed my trap in, switch it around, make sure it's solid, and, and then when I get finished, the trap pan should be a little bit lower than the surrounding ground. Mm -hmm. All right? Oh. Oh. Any more questions? Uh, do we have any first time trappers this year? This is your first time. Okay. How about someone who's been trapping 10 years or less? Okay. 20 years or less? 100 years or less? Okay. Uh, what I want to say is if, if you have any questions uh, when the seminar is over and you want, want to ask me, feel free just to come up to me. Um, now, I, I did say, and I'm not trying to plug traps for sale or anything like that, but I use, the, I've gone to the Sleepy Creek uh, one and three quarters exclusively for uniformity, okay? In other words, I'm out there going to this farm and that farm, and I'm grabbing a trap. You know, you have to recalculate. Well, this is a victor, this is that, you know. I just do these here now. Straight through. And they're all the same, okay? So, and I do have some of the older, modified, base-plated uh, traps that I brought along that are for sale if anyone's interested in those, but I didn't want to plug, you know, I don't know, how they feel about that here, but some folks are just Hello. getting started. Hello. Yeah, some folks are just getting started, and you, you know, and maybe cash is, if it's like me, cash is not so readily available nowadays. <laughs> but, uh, okay, any, before we close, I think we're getting close to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, the man shook his head, yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's 11.05. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone said that might be a good thing, you know. When you get done your demo, it might be so bad that they don't know who you are. <laughs> no, so I'm a fine job. I'm a boy that uh, loves to trap. Um, I hope that I did okay for you here and that you learned something. Uh, about trapping and to make some little secrets here and there. And that's what makes it all go around and come together. Um, so if you have any questions after the demo's over, feel free to ask. Alright? Have a nice day and happy trapping.